Welcome to Real Life Beyond Faith. I'm Jenica Crail, and I blog at reallifebeyondfaith.com. Uh, I'm also a guest contributor at Removing the Fig Leaf on Patheos Atheist. It's about discovering sexuality without shame. Um, I'm making this YouTube channel as kind of an outlet to talk about reflections on uh, life after leaving religion, hence the name Real Life Beyond Faith. Um, I want an opportunity to kind of reflect on some of the changes that come about when you walk away from your faith and how that can affect your life and affect your outlook on things. So uh, on this channel, I'll just be making videos as topics arise that I'd like to talk about. I'll probably be bringing on my husband for some of the videos so we can have conversations and talk about, you know, uh, what it's like to be a couple discovering uh, life and relationship without a uh, God belief. Uh, maybe I'll even bring on a guest every now and then. Um, we'll see where this takes me, uh, but I think it'll be a good time and it'll be nice to connect with other people through this as well. So if you have anything to share or any comments, you can feel free to comment below. Um, feel free to subscribe, like the videos, uh, any of those things would be fabulous. I'll go ahead and share a little bit about my background. Uh, I grew up in evangelical Christianity and took it very seriously my whole life. I believed wholeheartedly in God and the Bible and believed that the Bible was the inerrant, infallible word of God because that's what I was taught and that's what everyone around me believed and therefore must be true. So I uh, grew up spending a lot of time reading the Bible, reading books about the Bible, learning about it, going to church every Sunday, going to youth group, uh, very involved in church activities and with um, other Christians. And in probably my mid-twenties, started having some pretty significant doubts, started asking some hard questions that I was having a really hard time finding the answers to. I kind of pushed those doubts aside because um, they were too hard. <laughs> uh, and since I couldn't find the answers, but I knew there had to be answers out there, um, because obviously, you know, Christianity is true. It's just a matter of, you know, a couple of why questions that I'll have to ask God someday, you know, at which I, I did pray about the, the questions and I tried seeking answers, but, um, some things were just a little bit too difficult. Like the whole idea of original sin and the fact that we should be held responsible for a nature that we were born with. I didn't get I didn't get to choose whether I was going to be sinful or whether I was going to turn away from God. That was just part of being human. So why if I were to not believe in God would I be destined for hell because of that? It's not like I made a choice like I'm going to be sinful. If I could have made the choice, I would have said, yeah, I'll, I'll be perfect. I would love to just be perfect. Well, like that, that whole idea did not make sense in my head at a certain point. And, um, anytime I would try to talk to other people about it, they either agreed with me that it didn't make sense or they would just kind of like dance around the subject and, uh, the question just never got answered. Well, in December of 2014, my dad came out to our family as an atheist. And keep in mind, my dad uh, was 51, I believe, when he came out. He had been a Christian his entire life. And hardcore at that, like, he believed very strongly in Christianity and was you know, what I would call my spiritual leader growing up. So long story short, hearing him come out as an atheist was a huge shocker um, and very unsettling. And at first I just figured, you know, he was going through a hard time 
with his depression or something because he's been he's struggled with depression his whole life and so I thought well maybe he's just in a bad place right now and you know this is just something that he's going through and he'll come out of it and you know believe in God again and such well as I talked to him more I realized that that was not the case that the reason that he was an atheist was because of research and study and reading all kinds of books watching stuff on the internet and stuff like um debates things like that and it got me thinking and made me realize that maybe some of this stuff that he was looking into is stuff that maybe i should look into um, at least so that then I could have a conversation with him about this stuff and I thought well maybe if I look into it and find the answers to his questions or his doubts maybe he'll you know consider believing again maybe um, he'll respect my opinion on these things and come back to Christ so I asked him what kinds of stuff he had looked into and he gave me a warning right from the start he's like if you travel down this road just be aware that it's not going to be easy and it could change your life significantly if you come to the same conclusions that I did just be aware uh, this this could be a bit life-changing for you and I said well at this point there's you know I can't just ignore the questions I've had and I, I need to look into it okay like, there's no choice here I have to do this so he started um, giving me a list uh, Jesus Interrupted by Bart Ehrman was on the top of the list and then Christopher Hitchens guy's not great he directed me to Seth Andrews podcast The Thinking Atheist um, there were a few debates online that he wanted me to watch or rather that he suggested that I watch um, it was interesting he wasn't trying to talk me out of my faith at all I never got that vibe it was more like watch this read this and then if you have questions or comments you can come back to me and we'll talk about it and so I thought that was um, pretty cool uh, and I didn't feel like I was being pressured to think one way or the other about things so I started reading stuff I went to the library I got a stack of books like that <laughs> it was it was a lot of books um, and I just started reading through them browsing through some of them reading all of other ones I started listening to audiobooks and watching debates online um, lots of uh, Christopher Hitchens Sam Harris um, or Ehrman so I dove into it full steam ahead um, just devouring every bit of information that I could find because once I started and once I started learning new things that I had never heard of like the fact that the Gospels the four Gospels that are in the canon of Scripture were written anonymously and it was just kind of a guess on who the actual authors were I had no clue I thought that you know that was absolutely those four authors and there was no doubt about it well it turns out that's not really the case and then of course I learn about all the contradictions that are in the Bible even the New Testament I learned about um, how a, there are a lot of books actually in the New Testament that are considered to be forgeries um, that they weren't actually written by Paul or the apostle that they're named after um, that was a huge shocker the crazy thing is like I'm listening to all this stuff and I'm thinking why the hell was this completely left out like you know pastors go to seminary they learn this shit and then they just don't even mention it oh yeah you know this was written by this person this was written by this person no the fuck it wasn't so I felt betrayed for one um, but also sick to my stomach uh, this book that I spent my entire life studying as if it was like the bread of life you know this this book I based my entire life on as it turns out it's just like 
man-made. It's just put together by a bunch of old dudes from ancient times who didn't know what the fuck was going on. So I was a little pissed. And I think something to keep in mind uh, when you're encountering a lot of atheists who used to be religious, who are mad, who are angry, it's part of the grieving process. Um, finding out that what you have believed and based your entire life on is false uh, can make you a bit pissed. Um, I know I was very, very pissed because <laughs> I just felt like I had been betrayed. And the thing is, is I had no one to really direct that anger at. I couldn't be mad at my parents. You know, they were just doing what they thought was best for me. I, I tried not to be angry at my pastors. Um, although I do, I do question why certain information wasn't shared in sermons. Um, it seems like they purposely left certain things out so as not to, you know, stir up doubts. And I think that's a little bit shady. Um, if you went to seminary, then you should know uh, some of this stuff. I just, I don't understand. But anyway, I'm getting kind of off topic. Um, but basically found out all this crap and you know, biblical scholars almost across the board agree with a lot of what was said in these books. Um, and any apologetic arguments that I looked at or debates that I watched that address these issues, it seemed like the apologists were either just dancing around the issue or they were coming up with excuses that made absolutely no sense. Um, logical fallacies, just straw man arguments. It got to the point where I like just was like throwing books across the, the room. Like I, I was very, very frustrated. And this went on for a couple of months um, before I finally was like, you know what? I don't think I can believe anymore. Um, based on what I have learned, based on what I'm continuing to learn, and the more I think about this stuff, the less it makes sense. The more I open up my mind to the possibility that I could have been wrong this whole time, the more I think I actually was wrong. I mean, there, there are the questions I already had, and then there's the questions that are being raised now, now that I know more about this stuff. And... I, I just got to the point where it wasn't even a choice. It was just like, I don't think I believe anymore. Like, there's nothing I could do even to continue to believe based on what I know now. And the very first time that I said that I was an atheist out loud was to a Jehovah's Witness who came to the front door. Uh, she, she came and she was asking me questions about, you know, if I had heard of the Watchtower and stuff like that. And I was like, um, actually, I'm an atheist, and I don't, I don't believe any of that, or and I don't believe in God or anything. And it was just like the weirdest thing to hear that come out of my mouth. I mean, I had, I had grown up in a charismatic church where we would speak in tongues, and I was a worship dancer at one of my churches where every Sunday morning I would go up front and and dance an interpretive worship dance for God, like, like I wasn't just a lukewarm, you know, Christmas Easter Christian. Like I took this super, super seriously and, and had a personal relationship with God. And now I'm standing here at my front door talking to a stranger and telling them I'm an atheist. So that was kind of, kind of crazy and kind of liberating actually. Um, which was kind of the surprising part. It was like once I finally accepted the fact that I didn't believe anymore, the burden of cognitive dissonance was just kind of lifted off my shoulders. Um, this overwhelming sense of discomfort and confusion all of a sudden wasn't there anymore. So I just kind of developed um, a different perspective on things and 
a different outlook on life and about my questions and realize like I don't need to have all the answers I uh, and if I don't have the answer to something, I can look for the answer with an objective perspective and accept whatever I find. And I don't have to match it up with an ancient book that says otherwise. Um, now I can look into evolution and learn about how we came to be the way that we are and I can accept that and I don't have to have this feeling like but how does this fit into the Adam and Eve story and like I don't have to try to like come up with these scenarios of how that could be plausible instead it's just oh okay so that's how it worked sweet that's actually really cool like I like this um, I started looking into like cosmology and astrophysics like I just could not get enough because this was all stuff that I hadn't learned before hadn't really looked into even though I found it fascinating um, it was just too hard to make sense of given my beliefs that I just kind of naturally avoided it and I think that's what a lot of people do is they just avoid topics that make them too uncomfortable and that's how we stunt our growth as human beings like if we're not challenging ourselves and putting information in front of ourselves that is going to make us uncomfortable then growth becomes very difficult and um, I wasn't able to grow and to change my beliefs and perspectives until I put material in front of me that made me very uncomfortable, that challenged my beliefs, that challenged everything that I, I stood for my entire life. I was finally just like, I have to look into this. I can't just go on with life uh, like these questions don't matter. And when I did that, growth happened. It wasn't what I was expecting. It definitely wasn't what I wanted. Um, but now looking back on it from, from where I am now, I am so glad that I did. And I am so glad that I was able to uh, walk away from something that was so damaging to me. And I know I'm not alone in that. I've met a lot of people who say the same thing, that they didn't realize how damaging their beliefs were to them until they stopped believing and then looked back on their life before and were like, wow, I didn't realize that that was causing so many hangups in this area. You know, for instance, sexuality. You come away from religion with a lot of sexual hangups. It's almost impossible not to, especially if you take it serious, like if you take your, um, your faith seriously. I took it super seriously, and because I took it seriously, I took the sexual stuff seriously, like virginity until marriage and all this stuff and a lot of it caused um, a great deal of suffering in my life and my child is weak so I'll just go ahead and wrap up by saying um, that this has been one of the most life-changing experiences of my life um, becoming an atheist and changing my perspectives, challenging myself constantly, learning new things. Um, it's been a really, really great, liberating, freeing experience. Um, and for once in my life, I don't have any cognitive dissonance. I don't have these gnawing questions that I feel like I have to try to make sense of. Um, Nowadays, if I have a question about something, I do the research and accept the findings of science and logic and go about my life. Um, oh, my puppy's trying to wait. Hello. <laughs> Just like that. Come here. So, yeah, this will be fun. 
I'm excited to uh, start making some videos and um, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Like most of you, I was indoctrinated with religion At a time when I was much too young to make decisions Dragged by the hand without permission Like the cognitive ability to see the contradictions and the superstitions I know my mother really thought that she was doing right Cause after all, this wasn't a war she was taught to fight Buried under layers of prayers, emotional attachments and every other